Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a special presentation for uh, adult Bible class here at Faith Lutheran Church and Preschool. Uh, you'll notice that we're here in a in a new in a in a new or new for for Sunday Bible class, but a, a different setting because we're here in the sanctuary. And uh, sitting next to me is not Pastor Rob, uh, Mrs. Jenny Whiteley. Uh, she is our, our, you're called, and you're the, the music director and missional minister, right? Mi- missional ministry and, yes. and leading, leading those efforts and, and leading worship and helping us to uh, embrace our community and connect us Christ's family, as we so often say, right? Yes. Great. Exactly. Awesome. Well, so the reason we're here in the sanctuary and in and, and this new setting is because, uh, as many of you know, Jenny made a special trip to uh, Tanzania. Uh, and she was in Tanzania for, was it almost two weeks? Yes, 14 days. 14 days. Is your microphone on? I think Pastor is on. No, you're oh. muted. See, I have that. See, it's that. It's have, sitting on the right side. It's sitting on. PC. It must be this side. It's yeah. that side because I have issues with it as well. So it's that side. It's not you and it's not me. It's, it's just, just that, that side, side of the presentation. Yeah, I'll take right. that. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. Uh, so we're glad you're here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very supported from the senior pastor yeah. in the back row. Um, so we've got we've got the uh, Facebook live stream up. I've got my phone. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, as we go through, uh, we'll pause and see if you have any uh, things for clarification or questions that you might have. Uh, but we've got some pictures. We've got some mementos, and and uh, I guess the technical term would be artifacts, things from your trip. Uh, and so we're excited to hear about it. But before we begin on you talking about the journey, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Uh, we are uh, ever thankful for uh, the mission of your son, Jesus Christ, that he uh, came and dwelt among us, that he tabernacled among his people uh, so that he might uh, take on, on flesh and redeem our, our sinful flesh through his perfect life. Uh, we are, are thankful and humbled that you have uh, called us as your as your children and called us as your disciples to to go and spread the message from Jerusalem into Judea and to the very ends of the earth. Uh, we thank you that that the gospel message has spread across the gro- globe and and continues to circle around again and again, uh, bringing people into the into the faith of your Son Jesus Christ and into everlasting life. We thank you for for Jenny's uh, trip and her safe return. We are thankful now for uh, her presentation and we pray that you would uh, help this to be. Uh, edifying to us and that it would build up your kingdom uh, and, and lead us to continue to be on, on your mission uh, of spreading the gospel to, to the very ends of the earth, uh, even those ends that are in our own backyard. It's in your Son, Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, Jenny. So you were in Tanzania for like two weeks and you get back. And one of my favorite questions to ask, especially while we're on a trip, is What's the first thing that you're going to tell some? I'm usually with high school kids, and uh, high school kids are, are, are generally not known for being real uh, talkative. So I asked them, as, as of this point, what's the first thing you're going to tell your mom and dad about? So when you got home, what was the first thing you told your husband? Or when you called your mom and dad or your best friend, what was the very first thing you told them about your trip to Tanzania? Okay. The first thing that I told them was, you're not going to believe how awesome it was to be able to go into these villages and meet these people and to share the story from creation to salvation to folks that pretty much haven't heard it mm, or mm-hmm. don't know a whole lot about it yeah. and um, to see them as you tell it. Mm. That so, was probably the number one thing that was most impressive for me. Sure, to see, to see how they received that message and the good news of salvation and forgiveness. Yeah, and to be able to just even do that, to, mm-hmm. to go there and yeah. do something like that, because, you know, it's just awesome. Sure. And I met, and we'll get into this, I think, a little bit later, but I imagine that was, uh, there was some, some nerves on your part. A lot uh, of nerves. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll, well, let's hold on to that thought, and let's, let's, we'll get there in a little bit. Uh, but, so who did, who did you go with, or why, why did you go on, on this mission trip? Okay. Well, there were, um, let's see if this is going to work. Is it going to work? It, it worked in practice. It worked just a second ago. There, there we go. go. Either you did it or the producer did it. (laughs) That's okay. (laughs) So um, the uh, Southeast Lake Victoria District or Diocese has a mission statement. There it is. You may read that. Mm -hmm. But there were 10 of us that actually went. Okay. So, and I'm in there somewhere. All right. You you can find me if you can see it. It's kind of a small picture. A little Where's Waldo. Yeah. (laughs) So I am in there. There were 10 of us that actually went. 
And uh, so these folks went. Here's the five of us from this area. I'm the one Mississippian. Okay. And, and so, or, or as they say, Mississippi, Mississippi. Yeah, uh huh. Uh huh. And um, so there were four others from uh, this area, and then two from Nashville. Okay. And that is Bob Allen. He is the United States direct link to this mission. Okay, to Nashville. the Southeast Lake Victoria Dish Diocese. Yeah, the, the Lutheran Church of Tanzania. Got yes. it. Okay. And then we had we met up with three more that were from Minneapolis. Okay. So so there were ten. Which was pretty awesome. Yep. So. So this is your journey here. This is the, the trip that you took. It is. And boy, was it like the never-ending <laughs> trip. Okay? All right. Walk, walk, walk us through it, you know, rel, uh, Olympic speed walking style. All right. We're going to go through this, so everybody hang on, okay? So first we were supposed to leave on a Thursday. That didn't happen. Flights were canceled. You've heard the nightmares. What? Uh, I know. No, shocking. And so then we ended up leaving Friday. We left and went from that little bitty spot from Memphis to uh -huh. Atlanta. We went from Atlanta. Oh, and by the way, the four of us were the ones that got our flights canceled. No okay. one else did. So then we flew all the way up there to Amsterdam. And once we got to Amsterdam, we left, like I said, on a Friday morning. We got to Amsterdam. And then we flew all the way down south to um, Tanzania. And you can kind of see where that is. Now... Uh, once we got to Tanzania, we just kind of unloaded and got to um, go through customs. So that's a little picture of going through customs. And it's just funny because you, you pull up on this big slab of concrete mm. and it, this little building or whatever, and then you, everybody just kind of... The first, the first of to, many differences of, yes, of how life no operates. No organization, uh -huh. but the military people will gladly tackle you sure. if you don't do what you're <laughs> you don't, supposed right, to right, do. Right, right, right. That's okay. fair. At least they make it clear. Yes. Right. So here is Tanzania. This is an idea just to give you an, an idea where Tanzania is. It's that little fuchsia, magenta the fuchsia, yeah. area there. And just to give you perspective, Tanzania is 40% larger than Texas. Because okay. so. Africa is like two United, two contiguous United States. Probably, yeah. No, I'm t like I'm telling you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, that was a statement. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. You're That's welcome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, he, he's just a walking encyclopedia. Sometimes, he? for better or for so, worse. So anyway, right. so now this is bigger Tanzania here. So we arrive in Arusha. That's where the Kilimanjaro Airport is. Is Arusha on the right or on the left of this? It's picture? on the right where the red star is. Oh, okay. So the red star is Arusha. Now this is we left on Friday. This is Saturday night. Okay, so I left Friday morning. This is Saturday night. I get to Arusha, and we're going to have to go to Mwanza. And so we spent, we had to spend two nights in Arusha because we were supposed to normally fly Saturday, but we got pushed to Sunday. Didn't have any flights Sunday. We're not flying on Sunday. So we had to wait till Monday. So then we were supposed to leave Monday morning from Arusha mm -hmm. to go to the Blue Star, which is Mwanza. But we did, that flight got canceled at 10 a.m., so we didn't get there to leave till 6 p.m., okay? So there's another eight hours. So it's 6 p.m. Monday night, and we finally get to fly from this Arusha to Mwanza. And that, that body of lake, that water up there, is actually Lake Victoria, okay? So that's Lake Victoria. So we fly. That is the big airport of Mwanza. Isn't that awesome? Check it out. And um, that was the arrival, so that little conveyor belt there, when you got there, they, they took all your, your luggage. It took about an hour to fly there. They took okay. your luggage, and they threw it on that outside conveyor mm -hmm. belt, and it came into a little room. Uh -huh. You picked it up. Picked it up, and then away uh -huh. you go. You came out on this right. other side. So you land, you land in Mwanza, and you still have a drive ahead of you, don't you? Oh, yes. So here, this is Mwanza on the left there, and we had to drive all the way up to this Busega district. The area, and you see, we kind of traveled the lake. Yep, kind of right. around the shore. So of the we lake there. loaded up the SUV, mm -hmm. everything on top. This is about eight o'clock. We finally took off on Monday night. Ooh, that's blurry. And we get to the Sandmark Hotel, and that's actually acts as a western corridor into the Serengeti. Okay. So the and everything, and that's the hotel we stayed at, which was right. really nice. Great. Really nice, even though we had limited electricity, sure. limited. I mean, everything like that. So. All right. So. Uh, so 
your travel went up as things would be expected in 2023, right? We're in 20, is, is it 23 or 22? 22, it's 22? <laughs> yeah, whatever. All right. So, uh, so things went as, as would be expected. Yes. So, so that was your travel, but you, and you mentioned Bob Allen as being the, the, the go, not the go between, the connecting point, the liaison between the, the church and, and Tanzania and the United States. But so, Tell us about the Lutheran Church in, in Tanzania and, and a little bit how it's structured, because uh, I, I don't know much about it, and I imagine that the rest of us watching don't, don't know much about the Lutheran Church in Tanzania. Yes. Okay. So the ELCT, which is the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Tanzania, SELVD is a diocese, okay. which is the Southeast Lake Victoria right. Diocese. So it's, we, might, we might parallel it to a synod in a district. Sure. I think is probably the way to think about it. You've sure. got the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and then we're in the Mid-South District. Yes. So the SELVD diocese mm-hmm. actually has six districts. Oh, okay, broken up within it. Yes. All right. Yes, and so the busega Shinyanga district is where mm-hmm. we were at. Okay. Okay. So um, I'll get more into that as we unfold this. So here's how it works. They, they have the bishops, and the Bishop McCullough is currently the bishop. And he is in the red with the um, green hat. And then the assistant or associate bishop is in the red hat, and that is Johanna. And um, you may have heard some of these names. I don't know, especially the pastors. Um, I know McCullough was at one of the presidential mm-hmm. conferences pres- or pastor conferences and stuff. But, and then the rest of those are pastors that, that went with us as mm-hmm. wherever we served. So now, so here's how it works. There are actually 26 or 25, 26 mm-hmm. dioceses, okay? So the bishop serves the SELVD pastors or the district. Mm-hmm. Then the pastor serves the village, which is the people in the village. Uh-huh. And then they pull evangelists from the villagers okay. there to help us to serve the missionaries. So that little yellow area where the arrow is pointing, that is the Southeast Lake Victoria Diocese. Got it. They added it because the Tans- because uh, it's, Lutheranism. It's growing. Is growing. It is one of the fastest growing churches. It is yeah. the fastest over there. Growing. Wow. Okay. And it's important for us to also remember that in the in the global south, right, south of the equator, the global south is where Christianity is growing, is is seeing the most growth and uh, and most conversion of folks. Whereas uh, in the historic places of uh, of Christianity, the Middle East, the Middle East has been persecuted out. Uh, in Europe, it's slowly dying away or has died away in, in significant ways. And we're, we're seeing the decline of the Christian church in the United States of America now. But the church will always, you know, there will always be a remnant. Christ will always have a body. And that's growing in, in the global south right now. And the Lutheran church is part of it. Right. Yeah. Right. But, um, okay. So, so we kind of have an idea now of where I was at, um, in Africa, finally. And we finally got to where we were able to... Um, spend the night in our hotel on Monday night. So we left Friday morning, all that travel till Monday night. Okay. And I, I think too. So it's. I think it's helpful. It's helpful for me to know that you were getting plugged into an organization. Yes. That you weren't. Uh, uh, you. The, the first term that comes is a wildcatter, right? Like uh, somebody just out, do, you know, uh, just kind of doing your own thing. We're just going to go out and start evangelizing people and no no support system. But you're, you and this whole group that were able to go, and who's, who's gone for multiple years now, you were able to, to plug into a, an overarching structure and an established church body uh, that would continue to, to bless these, these folks that you're sharing the gospel with, right? Yes, this was all very planned, very mm-hmm. strategically planned. And there were only two of us that had never been before, okay. um, myself and one from Minneapolis. Okay, so, very good. So. Okay, so these are churches that we're looking at here. The one on the left is Bishop's Church. And he has electricity and mm-hmm. flushing toilets. Oh, nice. Now, the church on the right are the churches in the villages. This okay. is what they look like. And they have no running water. They mm-hmm. have no electricity. There's no, um, they have a little um, outhouse in the back, okay. if you want to call it that. Sure. And um, so, um, but there's actually nothing like to sit on in this outhouse. So, <laughs> there you go. Just enough said about that. So, but it's very humble, very uh-huh. humble. But you know what? They're perfectly fine with it. Mm-hmm. So there's a, a, a content, contentment in the gospel. It is absolutely. So now, so here's how this is what it looked like for me as a day in and day out thing. Um, 
the, uh, uh, what would happen is we would get in that bus down at the bottom there. We would travel in the bus, all load up, go to whichever village that we're looking at. We were in three different districts or three, uh, three different um, villages, one district but three different uh, villages. And so the, the big church where Pastor McCalla or Bishop McCalla was, was in that a village called um, Yeniniga the best I can mm-hmm. and uh, but here's in um, this is in a Neashimo um, area so anyway this is where we would find a pastor which is Pastor Patrick he would hook up with us you can see the four of us there and three of uh, three of the missionaries were there and then one of the evangelists is what they call them from the congregation and you'll notice that she's holding some a piece of paper and what does what happens is she goes with us and takes us through the village, and she will introduce us to mm. different families okay. and homes. Yep. And then um, we would um, talk a little bit, mm-hmm. and then we would um, start to share stories yeah. about. Um, Did you have? Can you tell us about one of the times in one of the families that you talked about, and how that all how that all came about in terms of being able to 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 evangelize sure. or share the gospel? Sure. Because um, the, the the evangelist or the yeah she would record the things. Okay, she would she, she'd right as yes. you're talking to them, she'd write yes. their names down. So yes, I will share with you. This was um, this girl on the left. Um, What's her name? Her name is Jen. Oh, that's fun. Mm-hmm. You're Jenny and she's Jen. Yes, and Pastor Patrick and I, he's the pastor that was with us. He um, would tease me because once someone had introduced me with. My full name, Jennifer. Okay. Uh-huh. And then he heard other people calling me Jenny. Oh. And then um, he decides to call me Jen, which I told him that my sure. siblings do that, my okay. family. Yeah. So he would always go, where's Jennifer? <laughs> oh, Jenny. Oh, now it's Jen. <laughs> so he would be like, <laughs> so he just was kind of, he just thought that was very fascinating. Yeah. You know, I uh, guess it's you something could... they don't really do over there maybe. I don't know. But so I have right. these nicknames. So you so we've got Jen here. It's, it, we've got Jenny and Jen. Yes. And and. What, how did well, the conversation go with her? Okay, sh- this was fascinating because, first of all, she was so intrigued that I had the, her name as well. Mm. And then we, the best we could, we started having a conversation. I had an interpreter. And she shared how, um, growing up in her family, she was sick. She was a sickly child. And um, so I was, you know, sharing, I prayed for her and mm-hmm. sharing that I was really sad to hear that, but that she was doing very well now. But I also shared with her then that, my daughter mm. was also a sickly mm-hmm. child. She had epilepsy, okay. and um, which she's doing very well now, uh, and um, doesn't have to be treated for it anymore. Sure. So we had that connection. Oh, okay. It was great, and just uh, she was just so excited mm-hmm. that we kind of had yeah. it's like all the way from the United States and here, and then we right. just had that connection. And so when you had that conversation with Jen, did that end the conversation, or was that the springboard into something more? Oh, it springboarded. Okay. We just were able to just just to carry on more about um, our lives, how, mm-hmm. how she was living there that she, with her family and all. And, um, and then it grew to where um, the rest of the family, her father and the, mm-hmm. the kids and everything else, came to baptism. Oh, really? Yeah. How, how does that, how, so, so how does that conversation go um, from, uh, from, hey, we have the same name, to, oh, hey, do you want to be baptized? Okay. So... <laughs> So it ends up being like um, they want to know why we came to visit. Okay. So then we share with them why, they're, why we're there. And so we will use, during this situation when we mm-hmm. go to the villages, we use evangelism tools. And one of them is, is this piece of paper here, these different. It's like a flip, a flip folder thing. Okay. And they also make um, cubes, evangelism tube, or, uh, cubes, cubes okay. that... I like a Rubik's Cube, but they're different, but I couldn't work that thing. So, <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, so it has Swahili on the front, but when I'm reading it, I'm seeing the English that says good news for all. It's mm-hmm. on the back. And so it starts from creationism, mm-hmm. and it goes through to salvation. Got it. And I really enjoy these, too, because it, it, it has their, their custom. It, it, mm-hmm. the, it looks like them. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, we're different because they, sure. and it's so funny because when we show up, they're like, they bring their families together with their mm. kids. They're like gathered the kids and they're going like this. And, and, 
And so, well, so and, let's let's pause the evangelism okay. conversation real quick. What's it like when the whole, not the whole village, but when when folks gather around and stop and stare and point at you from a distance and, and just you, kind of gawk at you for? That's the nerves. That's when okay. the uncomfortable and the nervous, uh-huh. and you're like, what? Why are they doing that? Mm-hmm. Why do they? Because especially if you're blue eyed, oh, uh huh, and you're white. Mm-hmm. Mazuga. Look at mm-hmm. the mazugas. Mm-hmm. Look at the mazugas. And so they don't mean it in a right. derogatory or, or bad right. way. They just, just they're just fascinated. Mm-hmm. They just want to touch you and see you and, and mm-hmm. you know and everything. And yeah. just, and but it but it but it but still brings up some nerves. Oh yeah. It made me very like, I don't know if I want to go over here. So okay. So how did so how did you overcome that? What prayer? What is, all right. <laughs> well that's fair. That's fair, and I'm glad to hear that. What 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 was your what was your prayer? I was just, I prayed for God to give me strength that this is, this is just me. This is my Mm -hmm. human nature being this way. Sure. And then, so once I had, once I was just like, okay, I felt that peace. Mm -hmm. I was just able to open up and have conversation because they're so friendly Mm. and welcoming. Mm -hmm. I created all of that in my head. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it was totally my head. Okay. But now if I was in the big city of Arusha, Uh that's different. That's a little different. That's different because that was nerve wracking. They wouldn't even let us roll our windows down. Oh, wow. Okay. So a different environment. Totally different from village and big, bigger city. Because in the bigger city, when we first were there for a couple days, I wanted to roll my window down and our guide rolled it back up for me. And he said, no, Mm. no, because they will reach in and take or Mm -hmm. get whatever. Yeah. So that was a lesson learned. And okay. I think that kind of maybe what made me a little apprehensive oh, before sure. yeah. to go out in the villages. But yeah. it was just so different. So they all gathered around. They pointed their fingers at you. You prayed. You had some peace. You started, And so you started talking with Jen. And you worked through, did you work through these cards with the interpreter? We did. Yes. Okay. So they would sit and they would bring, um, they made sure you had the most comfort. You had more comfort than them. Mm-hmm. Than them. So they brought buckets turned upside down. That was your chair. But they made sure you were in the shade, sure. mm-hmm. not necessarily them, but you okay. were in the shade. And um, um, they would bring out buckets, stumps, chairs. Mm-hmm. They did have chairs, plastic chairs, whatever, and made sure we were very comfortable. Mm-hmm. Food, we could not eat eat the food. I don't have any pictures of the food, but um, um, we would eat. Uh, well, first, let me go here. Yeah. So, but then once we, sorry, once we started, they would sit down. And we would start the story, mm-hmm. and I'd introduce, you know, and we might would have prayer, but then they would interpret as we'd say just a couple sentences, sure. and they would interpret. Okay. And if they had any questions, then we would talk and answer. And once we were through, we would ask if they believed. Mm. And if they came to faith, and if they came to faith, we asked if they wanted, if they, if they realized they were a sinner. Mm-hmm. Then they would say yes or no, and then... Right. Um, so we would move forward with that. Would you? Uh, is, it, is, is it your wish to be baptized? Okay. And, and then, so then, so as the, as you're having that conversation with them and baptizing them, this is where the the support system of the um, the support system of the the church body comes into place, right? Because we're not just baptizing and creating saints and then not nourishing their faith and not correct. supporting them. Um, it's it, there was a uh, there was a tradition in the church where. Uh, when people would be baptized on the Sundays that folks would get baptized, the gospel reading wasn't Jesus' baptism. The gospel reading would be Jesus' temptation uh, because it's a reminder that the devil is going to come after those who have been saved and those who believe. And so that's the importance of the church. And so tell us again about the, about the, the recorder that was there and how you know once, once Jen and her family get mm-hmm. baptized, what is what is that process look like to make sure they get the the faith support that they need so before we leave this family um all of the names the evangelist and the pastor would would record all of the names of the people that were baptized then once they've done that this gives a record Mm -hmm. to the pastor so then he can come back and hold yeah witness them hold them accountable to feed feed their faith yes yes and um, pray for them, mm-hmm. and and just kind of make sure that they know that they're welcome. They need to be right. in church and this kind of thing. Yeah. So okay. That was pretty now good. Now, before you go, you've got another picture up there. <laughs> yes. Tell me, you mentioned something about about how you got to talking with these guys in this picture. Oh yeah. So, so tell these, us about tell us so about these that. guys. We were just walking along the road. Now you got to understand these little villages, these little homes mm-hmm. are like you walk down these narrow, th- thorny. 
Mm-hmm. Dirt, uh, they're very, they're not, it's not like walking in your grass. Okay. It's very, um, you need shoes and everything mm-hmm. else, which, but although they are barefoot. But, so these fellows are kind of walking around, and they see us. Mm-hmm. So they come, come walking toward us. And um, so as we were, the one with, that's standing beside of me, the very tall guy, he comes run, walking up straight to me. Mm. He just comes walking straight up to me, and he grabs my hand. And I was like, <laughs> oh, my goodness. A little, ner- a little, yeah, a little nervous. I'm like, and I was just like, um, um, Jumbo, Jumbo, that's hello, hello, mm-hmm. you know. And, and he's just, you know, I don't know what he's saying. Okay. <laughs> you know, and so all I would say is uh, Asante, which is thank you. Okay. And I go, thank you. I don't uh-huh. know what he was saying. I'm just like, uh-huh, Asante, Asante, I don't know. Right. So anyway, um, we don't know if they were up to no good mm-hmm. or what they were doing because sure. they had been, they're kind of dressed a little bit for being where, you know, because they're not hauling water. They're okay. not doing it. So we're. We don't know what they were doing. Okay. We didn't ask. So they're not really dressed for work, and they're not really dressed up. No, so but so we were we were yeah. really sure. But he just had to hold my hand the whole entire time. Okay. Even you can see like in taking the picture. Sure. But That's... so we stopped and we parked under this tree. Okay. Because they wanted to know what we were doing. Yeah. So then we just shared our story. We then went into the creationism, mm-hmm. our witnessing and um, sharing the gospel, and then we ended up baptizing every single one of them. Wow. That's, that's pretty amazing how, mm-hmm. you know, it, and it, it, it just strikes me now how, you know, talking with Jen and her family and being about the work of God in that area mm-hmm. has, you you know, you probably had no idea that you were, you know, you're like, oh, we'll meet people in their homes, not necessarily guys approaching us on the on road. On the road, absolutely not. And then, and then there's the, the nerves again. and I Well, when he came up to me and yeah. like, he just had to hold me, it was like he had to touch me and hold me the whole entire mm-hmm. time. I mean, I don't know why he could have, you know, there was another girl there, Cindy, sure. or the, or Mike was there too, these right. other, you know, but no, I don't know, mm. maybe because I was short, I don't, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know, I don't know, yeah. but see, here I am using the cards, Okay. Yeah. You know, and, and I didn't just and stick that, to that. I is mean, that Pastor Patrick there That is you? Pastor Patrick, Okay. so uh, yeah, he was the one that I really um, connected with a lot mm-hmm. during this trip. Okay. So, and there I am, that's just another family. Yep. And that little boy, you see the little boy between us, isn't he and, just sweet? Mm-hmm. And he just had to be right there. All right, well, good. So, and he never said a word. And he, you know, if his mama said something. Mm-hmm. He, he did it. Oh, yeah. You, you take a note over there. <laughs> <laughs> whoops, whoops, All right. whoops, so, whoa, 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 where'd we go here? There we go. There we go, all right. Yeah, that's there it. There we go, good. Uh, so this is you baptizing some folks? Yes. All right. And some are from walking, mm-hmm. and others are in their homes. Okay. So, um, and it's just, it's, I cannot explain to you the joy, mm. the joy that it brings me, it brought me. Sure. To be able to do this and to share yeah. the gospel mm-hmm. and to see people just come to the Lord. Well, yeah, and the joy that, it, the, the, that joy in the heart that it brings to them as well, and mm-hmm. the, the, the peace, you know, because there's no promise that, that life is going to be easy, Mm-mm. but there's a there's a joy that that comes from having your your riches in in, in our Lord and Savior, absolutely, and the the gift of faith that that. And comes we would there. pray for them too, whether they would be baptized sure. or not. We prayed at their homes for them or their or why right. any person we met, we prayed for them, okay. their lifestyle, their mm-hmm. their their crops, everything. Yep. So now there are plenty of children to go around. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they stuck to us like glue, and they just wanted to go. Now, the, the, the lady in the bottom picture there, behind her is actually, that's Jen standing behind okay. her. That was her family. Towards the back of the picture there. And you'll see everybody has hats, right? Mm-hmm. So, and that was part of, I don't know if you guys remember, but when we were supposed to go two years ago, I um, asked for knit, um, we, we gave, asked for these stocking hats, these knitted mm-hmm. hats, these toboggans, whatever you call yeah. them. Tukes if you're from Canada. Yeah, there you go. And so we collected so many, and I held on to those, and mm-hmm. I took them with me. Okay. They love to wear the hats, and I took a bunch of ball hats. Uh-huh. And if you notice. Because there's a lot of guys wearing, like, Farm Bureau hats, right? That was the pastors. They okay. gobbled those up. They, because we like had the Farm a pre- Bureau hat? Yeah, we All had right. a preschool parent bring those. They were brand new, and uh-huh. those were the hit. All right. And so they all wanted the Farm Bureau baseball caps. Okay. So that was pretty cool. All right. But then the rest of them, like the boys seem to want the caps more so. Okay. And then the girls got the, um, st- the little the, pullover the knit little hats. The or whatever you want yeah. to call them. Yeah. 
And, um, but, uh, so lots of ch ch children. Uh -huh. The little boy there with the um, American flag, mm -hmm. he was my buddy. Okay. And um, he wanted to carry my water all the time, my bowl from baptisms, mm -hmm. everything. We would go to homes, these little village homes, and um, they're not his house. But he goes walking right in their house, mm. gets me a chair, brings uh -huh. it out, and puts it down in the shade for me to sit. And he'll pop that chair seat. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. You know, at first I was a little uncomfortable. Then I thought, yeah, yeah I've got right. this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, so he will go ahead of me if he knows where we're going. And, yeah. he'll, and then he'll make sure that I was comfortable. Sure. So bless his heart. Right. But you see how loving? I mean, just look at that second picture there in yeah. the middle. It's just, and again, Pastor Patrick. And yeah, I. it's very sweet. So, so. Uh, you, you got to go to Africa. Lifetime, like first, like maybe once in a lifetime sort of a trip. And we know that you went on a mission trip, but was it was it all missionary work, or did you get get a break a little? We bit? We got a little break. So here right. I'm going to whiz through this okay. right quick. We were able to go uh, once we went into the village. There were th like I said, three different. We were in the village maybe five and a half days. I think okay. is what it was by the time you take your travel time and all yep. that. So um, well, they would ask us before we started fundraising for this trip if we wanted to take a little two-day safari, and we said, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we funded that ourselves, okay. just to be clear. Sure. We funded that. Um, that, was, that came out of our own pockets, and mm -hmm. then the rest of the trip was funded from, from you guys, from donations, and which we appreciate. So we went into the Western Corridor. Pastor Rob, these, I have bird pictures just <laughs> for you. <laughs> So we started in the Serengeti. We traveled through the Serengeti and came out on the other side, also going through the, the Terengire um, area as uh -huh. well. Okay. So we stayed in two different lodges. Mm -hmm. That is some kind of stork. Kids, that stork is this tall. Mm. I kid you not. He came up to about like my shoulders. And I was like, he kind of made me think of an old grandpa. Mm. You know, he was this so this was the tents that you sleep in the first mm -hmm. night. So they're all like heavy-duty canvas tents yep. with a nice... This was, this was a little nicer, this uh -huh. one was. This was in the Terengiri area. Yes, right. we saw we elephants, saw. big elephants. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Because you're, you're, in, the, you're in, the, in the African Rift Valley, which is one of the most like, biologically diverse areas. Yes, these two the areas, we were able to see almost every animal mm -hmm. that... Oh, you got to see a lion, didn't you? Just wait. Okay. I'll All tell right. you about that. All right, yeah, yeah. So these are other birds. PR, I don't know what that one is on the right. Pastor Rob, I have no idea, but it's big. <laughs> He's got nothing. Oh. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> he didn't now, yeah. now, if anybody knows what that's called on the left there, it's in the, like, the caribou family or something, but it's the largest one. Okay. So it's some kind. It's a red something, I think. All right. I have so, no idea. Yeah, and that one on the right is. You might know what that is. Is that a baboon? It is a baboon. Good job. You could probably guess what that is on the left. It, looks like it some is. Sort of doves. It is kind of a pigeon, or dove. Yeah. Dove, yeah. Is it a pigeon? A pigeon is a, a pigeon is a rock dove. <laughs> <laughs> we're not. A, we're not all experts like you, Pastor Rob. He's got his bird book. He's still. Look studying. at the bird on the right. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah. Oh, wow, some, look here. All right. You know, some, you know what that is? Some cheetahs yes. hanging out. Cheetah. They were everywhere. But you right. know what? We didn't get as close as what that looks like, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So just wait, letting tell, you know. Tell about, I want to hear about the lion. Okay. Well, wait, you got to see him oh, first. Right. Well, I'm stuck again, producer guy. There it goes. Look there. Some more birds. Aren't those neat? Yeah. I'm going to send these pictures to Pastor Rob, then he can... He'll tell he us can, about them later. Yeah, he can pull yeah. them up later. One of my favorite ones to did see. You, did you know there's five subspecies of giraffes? Yes. They were telling us different things yeah, about you, the giraffes. The, and, you can tell them apart by the, the, the border of the, of the brown patches. And can, do you know how to tell their age? I do not. The darker, uh -huh. the older. Okay. It's <laughs> good to know. The darker, the older. The little bird on the left is a really popular bird. Okay. It's everywhere. That one on the right is some kind of a, some kind of a cock something bird they called okay. it, and I can't remember. So anyway, and that is some form of an eagle. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then that is. Is that an Impala? It is. I'm glad. You know, I had to remember that name by saying it's a Chevy. <laughs> something Chevy. <laughs> 
I couldn't remember your, your, your it. So Na- your North Carolina NASCAR roots it's run deep. It's an Impala. So, right. and then those are crocodiles. Uh-huh. Oh yes, they're big. They were big. And what are these? Yes. Oh man, they are something to see. Let me tell you. They okay. are. I'll, I'll, yeah. Enough said about them. Who One can bird. see the bird in the right? Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. He's pretty hidden though, isn't he? Don't know what they are, but they're nope. fascinating. All right, we, Jenny, for the sake of time, we've got to get to your lion story and okay. then close us out Black here. face, monkeys, zebras, or zebra, as they say. Uh, I'm stuck again. Some wildebeest. Water buffalo, Kate wildebeest. Buffalo, yep. Here we go. There you go. There's the big boy. All right. All right. So tell us so, your lion story quickly. So we, we were going down the road in our safari truck, and we got a flat tire. All right. So they don't like you to get out. No, no, no. Don't get out of your safari truck. So he tried to, he tried to change the tire with us in it. Well, that didn't happen. So he says, okay, get out. Stay right in front of the truck. So we got out. We stayed in front of the truck as long as our patients would allow us. <laughs> so we kind of started walking to the back to just watch him and everything. And he was like, no, go back up to the front. So we were kind of, you know, like, don't do that. So then a few minutes later, there's a safari truck coming toward us. There was another person mm-hmm. visiting or viewing, having a safari. And they start coming, and they stop a little bit of ways off, and we're like, what are they looking at? Well, they keep coming on towards us then, and he says, you need to get back in your, and he does it in his Swahili. Um, but all the same, he's but telling But he's telling you. us to get back in the truck. Get back in, get back in. And we're like, why? We, he's changing the tire. No, you need to get back in. But we're changing the tire. No, get back in now. There's a lion right on the other side of this bush. Uh, we couldn't see it because there was a, this bush and stuff there. So then we got back in, and sure enough, we got up and looked up through the the, the so, ceiling of the and saw the lion. Sitting so there. as they say in North Carolina, you were within spitting distance. We were in spitting distance. That's not kidding. That's pretty wild. We were in rock wild. throwing, mm-hmm. <laughs> closer than rock throwing, spitting. Yeah. So so you that I mean that's. I mean, that's a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Yes. All right. You got that right. Because we were like, whoa. <laughs> Probably don't want to have it again. We were like, hopefully you had lunch already. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, glad you got to, the, to do the, the, the safari and, and see the, you know, God's creation there in Africa. What are, and so you, you were evangelizing. You got to do the, the safari. But there's, there's a broader level of support and other things that are going on with the, the Lutheran Church in Tanzania. Tell us about some of those Uh, efforts and ongoing things that are going on yes so this is what um this is what's going on over there in the district if you're not aware of your district supports these areas this is the Moadui I left out Lutheran so sorry the Moadui Lutheran secondary school I mean it doesn't look like much but it's pretty powerful Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of students there and uh, we support that matter and uh, we've added two new dorms and um that's really neat. Mm-hmm. So there are ways you can go to the like the um, East Lake Victoria Diocese website, or you can go to the Mid South District mm-hmm. and get connected that way as sure. well. But um, and then these are the mission balls. We took a bunch of these, and they have they have scripture that tells, but it's in Swahili, and it talks about all of the from creationism to salvation, the scripture that you would use to do that. Mm-hmm. And then we took them to the school and blew them up. Mm-hmm. So, and you have to pay taxes on that stuff when you take it as well. There were also basketballs. Okay. And then uh, we made hygiene kits. And these were for the ladies mainly. Mm-hmm. And uh, we got them um, so they had washable products that they could use mm-hmm. for their, the future use that they didn't, because they, they don't have access to be able to purchase things. Mm-hmm. So we, um, we brought these um, hygiene kits for okay. them, for the females. So now, also, there's the women's, the Lutheran Women's Missionary League, which is our LWML, mm-hmm. and check that out. It's written right there yep. above the building. Yep. They do a, um, we teach them sewing. Okay. We've set up a sewing room mm-hmm. to help, like, um, 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 oh, my gosh, for like, for widows. Uh-huh. Widower and, so they can support themselves economically. Yeah. So yes. instead of just giving them everything, giving, giving them a skill. Teach. So that they can continue to support themselves even after you guys go. Yes. And now, yeah. So you've you've got this picture here, and I think this is a this is the the I guess the heartrending part of the of what's going on in Tanzania. Yeah. Uh, so tell us 
about the, the albinos in Tanzania uh, and, and the, the plight that they're under uh, and, and what, we, what we as the Mid-South District do, what the, the Southeast Lake Victoria Diocese does, and, and why we have those ongoing efforts. Yes. So the, um, the really big orphanage, the albino orphanage, is in Arusha. Mm -hmm. But there's also one in Shinyanga, and that's, that's this one here. And um, so you can see the, the children. Mm -hmm. But um, it's like they're um, an albino child. I have a statistic it's here. Like, it's like one in 20,000 in, in the U.S. and one in 1,400 in... Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. There's, and, that, and to me, that's pretty impressive. That's, that's yep. huge. They don't know why. They don't understand yeah. why, what, why that's happening. But here's the, the thing. In traditional um, culture, they, the witch doctors, have taught the folks, especially out in like the, the, the original like Maasai tribes, and mm -hmm. a lot of these people came from the Maasai, which is the second largest tribe there. And um, so the witch doctors teach them that albino, or albino, however you say it, hold magical powers. So, but these children and their parents fear for their lives, because yeah. here's why. Because what they will do is they say they ward off evil spirits. And so they will, and they bring you good luck. So, like, they'll take hair mm -hmm. from the albino children and weave them in fishing nets. Mm. And they, so to bring them luck, maybe we'll bring mm -hmm. them a bigger catch. Or they will take, this is terrible, but they'll take their skin, they'll peel their skin, mm -hmm. or um, cut appendages, mm -hmm. and um, use, grind them up for potions. Mm -hmm. They'll use their finger bones for um, maybe on fishing nets or different things like to bring like or a wear charm or, something. or charm, yeah. But they will also hang their appendages on trees like talismans or mm -hmm. things like that mm -hmm. to ward off. So they think they're magical mm -hmm. and that they ward off evil spirits, right. which is really sad. So, so, they're, so they're being kidnapped and, and killed because, they're, because of their skin condition. Yes, their, their and condition. that is what they're being taught, and it's really mm -hmm. sad. So, And if you look on the table out there, I'll show you. When we would encounter some children with these charms mm -hmm. that they, the witch doctor gives them to put around them to protect them. Mm -hmm. And um, we talk to them about that. And sometimes we change their way of thinking and sometimes we don't. Mm -hmm. but, um, but the children, I was not able to go to the Albano Orphanage which, mm -hmm. because of our flight right. stuff. But it was, it was pretty amazing. But that's one of the ongoing efforts that that the Mid-South District does, that the, that the Lutheran Church in Tanzania does. Yes. Um, and again, it's a, it's, a, it's a reminder of the spiritual warfare that, that's going on and, and the, death, the death that's around us and, and the way that, uh, that we continue to see this going on in the world mm -hmm. um, and the, and the need just, for the gospel. Yeah, and these are just things that we handed out as we went along mm -hmm. our way. The children love the, the pee-pee. That's what they okay. call candy. That's what they call so. candy. All right. Mm -hmm. So... Um, and then you made it back home, and we're all glad you're back home. It's great. Um, <laughs> no, no, but I, I, we've got, we've got, a, we've got a few minutes, and, and so I, I, I want you to, to so you, you were able to go on this journey, and there's something, there's something about disrupting your pattern and, and your normal way of doing things. Yes. And then, uh, and so as you've come back home now after this journey, what are some, uh, some things that have have changed the way you think about? your witness and your ministry here, you know, at, in, at home, here at, at Faith? Uh, what are some ways about sharing the gospel that you've been thinking about? What does it mean for a, a congregation to do, you know, because we can't all go to Africa. No. We can't all, you know, we have our lives and our vocations and our things to do here. So, you know, as your pattern has been disrupted, what's the lesson for you? What's the lesson for, for us here at, at Faith right now? Well, the joy is you don't have to go to Africa. Mm -hmm. You can go to your neighborhood. Yep. Okay. Did, did you know? So there's like a million people in the greater Memphis area. Okay. 60% unchurched, dechurched, never churched. It's amazing. And I'm not real good at math, but I think that's like 600,000, right? Sure. Yeah. And you're from North Carolina. You don't know math either, mm -hmm. do you? <laughs> <laughs> Nope, Either I, way, know, but, I know music math, but that's You know it. music math, that's right. Um, but um, so the joy is, no, you don't have to go to Africa, and it's not for everyone. So, um, but it's relational. Mm. And I've always known this, but it really drove it home for me about establishing relationships mm -hmm. with folks. 
So if you know someone, you know, that's unchurched, dechurched, or however, you have to um, try to break that to where you can, um, that, that, that wall to mm-hmm. where you're nervous and afraid to be able to share with somebody and just s- introduce yourself and sure. just, it starts with conversation. Yep. But it's very, it's, it, it can be tough. I know it's not for everyone. Mm-hmm. But you know what? You don't even have to do that. Because you can let the light shine through you. They can see you are a person of God by loving them and caring for them, doing mm-hmm. for them, serving them, showing them grace. So if, if you have $5 left to put in your gas tank but you can't fit it, give it to the person behind you. Mm-hmm. That's showing grace. Sure. So just show the right. love so, of Christ. So li- living that gospel. Yes. To, uh, and being... You know, because you could, like you, you shared that the conversation and interaction you had with that girl, Jen. Mm-hmm. It could, it would, it would have been very easy and maybe more comfortable to end it with, oh, hey, we share the same name. And, oh, you're kind of sickly and my daughter was sickly. And mm-hmm. it was so a pleasure to, so it was such a great pleasure to meet you. And then just have mm-hmm. walked off and been like, oh, I had a great interaction with this young lady. Mm-hmm. But you, you had to get over your nerves and, and, and make that step or, or to, maybe shy away from that group of five guys who are all so much taller than you <laughs> speaking a different language. Mm-hmm. It would have been really easy to have avoided them even as they were kind of pursuing you in sure. some ways. And they were pursuing you because they, they saw what you were doing, right? Showing that grace. Yeah, they were curious. Yeah, and so then taking, being, being bold and courageous to, to take that next step, um, not knowing how they were going to react, right? Um, and so... And the, the phrase that comes to mind, and I, we say it often enough, was uh, uh, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that relational part. But then there's also that, that, that bravery, that courageous part, that, uh, that stepping out and stepping out in faith maybe is a way of saying it, to, to make that turn and say, hey, let me tell you about Jesus. Let me tell you about the joy that I have. Let me tell you about the forgiveness I know, mm-hmm. everlasting life. Not knowing if this is going to be received or if they're going to reject it or even reject you. Um, and that's a. And you have to be willing to accept it when they say no. Mm-hmm. I mean, at that point, because um, we did, we found it. You know, it can be really. Yeah. Because um, in some ways, it feels like they're rejecting you. Yes. Because because you're because right, Jesus is in you and in us by yeah. faith, and and we we identify so closely as children of God. And, and so that when we share this and then they reject that message that's in mm-hmm. some ways rejecting a mm-hmm. part of us and, uh, and, it, and it can feel that but way. But it's like, be truth before mm-hmm. you speak the truth. Sure. So, yeah. so living it all out. Any last thoughts, Jenny? I just, you know, I just want to say thank you for giving me the opportunity. It was awesome. And um, it's, it's just so humbling. And it, so it took me a while once I got back to realize how much mm. I have. I mean, I mm-hmm. just, to be able to not feel bad, mm. <laughs> guilty for what oh, I have. Oh, sure. But they, they, what they have, they love, they, they get, they don't know what mm-hmm. they're missing, they, right. or, but they're not missing. Yeah. So, so they just. Um, kind of drives you to, to be a blessing with all the blessings yeah. you've received. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's, it can be, I'm just like, it, I mean, it brought me to tears, sure. so, you know, but it's, it's amazing, and I learned a lot from them, so well, good. a whole lot. Well, thanks for going, Jenny. Thanks for making it back safe and sharing with us, and you've got a table of, of other things and mementos and other things that you've brought with you, uh, so if you want to talk with her a little bit before the second service begins, uh, you're welcome to meet Jenny out in the narthex, and, and then as people have questions, as you think about this and the thoughts percolate in your head, you are welcome to reach out and Talk with Jenny about her trip. I know she'd love to. Yep, praise team. So we got to wrap up here. Thank you, everyone, for joining us here in the sanctuary. Thank Thank you. (laughs) Thank you for joining us online for the live stream. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord with gladness. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.